In this next lesson, we're going to add a volume control to our video player. To see what this looks like, returning to the course files folder, we'll look inside the folder named 5 underscore volume and open finish.html. But if I were to say, my fellow citizens, that we should to the moon 240,000 miles away. So you see, we have a slider here in our movie. And as we drag the slider, the volume of our video updates, reflecting the value of the slider. The left extreme is mute, and the right extreme is full volume. Let's close this out. And so to get started, we'll open start.fla in the same folder. And we'll save it out, file save as. And we'll name it inprogress.fla in the same folder. Now before we look at the code, Let's look at what's changed on our stage. We'll see that we have an instance of the slider component. If we open the properties panel, we'll see that this slider component has an instance name of SL underscore volume. Close that. And now if we open the component parameters panel, we'll see that I've already established a few settings on this slider, including its direction is horizontal, live dragging is set to true, the maximum value is 1, the minimum value is 0, the snap interval is 0.05, that means if the user is dragging it, what's the interval at which the values will change. The tick interval is 0.1, that's uh, where the hashes appear. And the default value at startup is 1. Okay, so we'll close the component parameters panel, and now we'll look at the actions. So we'll click on the Actions layer, open the Actions panel. Now the first thing we need to do in order to get this mechanism to work is to actually hook the slider up. Right? We need to listen for an event on the slider and run a callback function. The event we're going to want to listen to off of the slider component instance is the change event. So we can scroll down to our init function. And right after the line where we call disable control, so right here it's my line 52, I'm going to hit Enter, create a new line. And I'm going to talk to the volume slider, sl underscore volume, dot, and we're going to add an event listener to that slider. We're going to listen for event dot change, right, the change event. And we'll run a function as a callback, which we will call on volume slider change. Okay, so now we're going to want to actually write that callback function, so we'll scroll down to the standard event callback functions. At the end here, we'll write function on volume slider change. It'll expect an argument of type event, and it will return nothing. So this function is run when the value of our volume slider changes. So we are going to want to read out the current value of the volume slider. The volume slider is the source of this uh, event callback, so we can talk to the target of the event object, evt.target, and read out its value. And the item we want to set equal to that value is the volume of the player, which is player, right, dot volume. The property on the media player instance is called volume, and we just set that to some number between 0 and 1, where 0 is fully mute and 1 is full volume. So if we collapse the actions panel, test the movie. But if I were to say, my fellow citizens, we shall send to the moon 240. So we can close this test movie window, and you see that it works. So that's uh, excellent, uh, but there's one more thing we have to do. And it's just like the pause button. The callback on the volume slider change event talks to a property of the media player. So we want to make sure that the video is loaded uh, and playing before we enable this volume slider. So just like with the pause button, we're going to want to disable this volume slider at startup, and we're going to want to re-enable this volume slider at the proper time. So if we turn to the actions panel, uh, disabling this volume slider is actually quite easy because we created a, a function that's called when we want to disable the controls, right? So we can scroll to the function called disable controls, and right after the line uh, right here, my line 79, that says button pause dot enabled equals false. We're going to want to insert a new line, sl underscore volume dot enabled equals false. And we can re-enable the volume slider when our video is visible and on the display list. Right? So we 
we do that in the on dimension change function. So we can scroll down to on dimension change. And right after we alter the width and height of our video, we can set SL underscore volume dot enabled equal to true so that as soon as our video is visible, we can also control the volume. Close the actions panel. Now again, this is one of those things that we won't really be able to test effectively running locally, uh, but this works, so you'll see it when you play this. But if we test our movie, we'll see that the volume slider still works. But if I were to say, my fellow citizens, that we shall send to the moon 240... Close this out. I'll save, Command S, save the FLA, uh, and close it, Command W. And so with that, your FLA should match what we have in the finished FLA, and we can move on to the next lesson.